Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Hope for the Hopeless, Prophet Lee Jondro teaches how hope carries us forward through the storms of life. Good morning, everyone, both here in person and those that are watching online. I'm grateful to be here. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that the world needs today is it needs hope. And one of the things that seems to be a lost art is bringing hope into others' lives. And so my opening verse for today I want to share with you is from the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. And it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So much of our hope is available to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, but so often we're resistant to what God does, and, and it causes us to churn up things in our lives and things. So there are people that are watching online, and there are people who are in the room, and each one of us needs a new measure of hope. It's almost impossible not to see the news, even if you avoid the news. You know what's going on. If you're on social media, you see what's going on on social media. And it may be as simple as opening up your, your, your social media and finding out that someone dear to you passed away and you didn't know it. And it takes away from where you are. And so when, when discouraging news and de even depressing news begin to flood the nation, the church and the soul, we need God's help to lift up our heads, our hearts, and our hands. It's one thing to be in this building or where you are and hear a message of hope, but it's where the rubber meets the road is when we get outside the building. When we go out and we find out that while we were gone, maybe it's something as simple as we go to the convenience store to pick up something or the grocery store, and we come out and we find we have a flat tire. And all of a sudden, we, we have this message of hope that abounds in us, and then we forget about it because now we're caught up. One of my greatest encouragements in this, in this day and age is that people would begin to communicate one with another, that they would begin to send words of hope, that they would create words of hope. And so it's, it, it, it often is said, you just need more hope. But all too often, we don't know how that affects us or we don't know what that looks like. So today I'm here to share with you some things that I use in my ministry, that I share in our, our home fellowship and things. Because when I see a post that wants me to be fearful, my wife would tell you, who's with me today, she would tell you that I turn around and go, I am not going down that way. I will not walk down that path of hopelessness. Even when difficult times and things come upon me, it's not that I'm immune to the things of the world. It's not that I'm immune to the works of the enemy or even my thinking. But what I refuse to do is allow it to bring me into a place where I can't get out of the hole. And so we uh, once... You know, we talk about fear being cast out, but once that fear is cast out, perfect love comes into our life. We know the verse. Perfect love comes into our life. Perfect love casts out fear. We know another scripture in the book of Timothy where it tells us that we have not the spirit of fear, but that of power, of sound mind, and of love. So I'm from New England, and we don't have a lot of snakes where I live. So we're walking, we're taking a walk the other day and my brother's talking about snakes. And all of a sudden I can feel this little bit of fear wanting to stir up in me. I'm not afraid of snakes, but I'm not their best friend. And so we're walking down and all of a sudden I became wary of what was going on. And all he did was say, you know, one day we were walking across this bridge and there was a big old snake on the thing and I'm going, I will be watching. But one of the things we see, so much of the news, we know the news wants to bring fear into our life because that's how they get people to follow them. But the one place we should not fear stir, see fear stirred up ought to be in the house of God, ought to be amongst our relationships. That when fear tries to come upon us, we need to look to the Father we need to see that the Father's love is that perfect love that causes us to cast out fear. Well, Lee, you don't know what I've gone through. You're right, I don't. But each one of us has an experience and each one of us has a change that we can minister to or a challenge that comes up. There, you know, People talk, we're more than an overcomer. That means you have something to overcome. If you don't have something to overcome, it's a struggle to be an overcomer. 
But the world always provides us with things to overcome. And, the, and, and, and we just need to walk past that. So when fear goes out of our lives, what do we replace it with? We replace it with hope. We, we, we look at that life-transforming grace, that grace that has come into our life, that empowerment not to sin, that, that, that grace that flows through our life that we can walk out this life here in an earthly realm. And so the first thing that hope does for us is it moves us forward. Fear usually causes us to retreat or at least not move. My brother, again, he was talking to me. He was telling me he and his wife were walking down the road and they saw the snake and she stopped. Now, I don't know about you. I'm not going to run away, but I'm not going to get close. And so fear has the ability to stop us, but hope has the ability and the power to move us ahead. Our Christian hope is in God and, and what he's doing in our life. And it's glory based upon the reliable word of God that we see in our lives and, and, and that. And the more, we, the more I look to the good things, now my wife and I have been down here since Monday. We drove down here at four o'clock last week, last week in the morning. And I've been doing meetings all week long with different people and things like that. And I'm a little tired. And, I'm, I, and I look at that, I have this hope, and my wife said it even as we were driving over there. She goes, I miss my life at home. I miss, I miss my cat. Maybe you don't miss cats. Maybe it's a dog. But I miss my life. I, li I miss the regularity of my life. I miss my bed. And so we have this hope that we're going to get on the road at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, and we're going to head back to New England. And our life is going to be where we are. It's not that we didn't enjoy what we've done, and it's not that we didn't appreciate all the relationships we saw and created here. But there's a hope that comes in the simple thing of going home. And so there's a hope in us that we're going home. And so our hope deletes or removes the regrets, and it underlines expectation. There's there's children coming into the world in this house. There's an expectation of what that looks like, not just an expectation for dad and mom, but an expectation of how that affects the house. The same expectancy is to what we find in hope. We find that it diminishes the drag on our life and it increases the momentum. The greatest way to move ahead is to have yourself look to hope or surround yourself with a few people that are hopeful and hope-filled. No one needs more of Job's friends. We don't need people to commiserate with us. We need people to help us to establish hope for what's to come. Amen. The second thing hope has the ability to do is it can energize the present. It, it, it makes today worth living. As I look out in the room, there's some people smiling. There's hope in their lives. Not because I'm up here speaking, but they're thinking about what's being said and it's bringing something into their life. And so, you know, it, it causes my tomorrow to have so much more value in today. And so what's difficult for others, for me, is that I, I look forward. When I get done here, I enjoy every moment of being in this room. I love speaking life over lives. I love bringing hope where hope has been not there. I love all those things. I love speaking in the spirit of God, speaking in the opposite spirit of what the world would do. And then when I leave here, I get home, I'm gonna take my five minute power nap, and then I'm gonna spend time with some other people, and I'm hope filled that we're gonna have a great time. And so sometimes what happens in life, we get caught up and it always looks the same. And so hope brings a new momentum into our life. Here's a big one. Where there is darkness, hope brings light. Hope doesn't deny the reality of the, the hurt or the pain or the wrongness or even the evil that's going on in the world, but it does shine a bright light into the valleys of darkness. 
And it points to the sunrise at the end of the day. And so one of the reasons I believe so much in hope is because so many people are going through difficult times and you can almost see, if you're my age, you maybe remember that, you know, Pigpen would walk through Charlie Brown's life and there would always be a cloud over his head and it would just follow him. And many, many people carry that heaviness. But I want to bring hope into their life. I want to bring change into their life. I want, to, I want to see their lives be better because I've been there and brought hope. The next one is hope increases faith. The, the scriptures tell us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith fuels hope, and hope fuels faith. So when we, we talk about increasing faith, we see that hope and faith are very much tied together. One brings life to the other. And without faith, we can't soar in hope. And without hope, we can't, we can't, um, we will limp along the way we go. But the, I truly believe, I, I don't like the word greatest, but the, the, the people who have the seemingly best lives are the ones that walk in great hope. The ones who believe hope and, and, and share hope. The next one has to do with hope is infectious. When I'm feeling down, I call up some of my friends. Actually, before I get there, I'll go watch a funny program on TV. I have some favorite comics that I listen to, and I'll turn one of them on. And usually within a few seconds, I'm feeling different about my circumstance. I'm feeling different about my situation. But I have some men in my life who are great hopers. And I need them in my life because when I'm feeling down, I want to be up. It doesn't mean I'm not, I'm trying to avoid things. It's just that I know the feeling of hopelessness is a trap for me. And so I, I, I can't afford to be there. Hope is healing. You know, we talk about, you know, brother was sharing about the, the cup and the bread and we pray for people and we lay hands upon people and we do all those things to bring healing. But hope itself, because it's infectious, it begins to change people's lives and it brings healing into their lives. I do a lot of what they would call counseling. I meet with a lot of people going through difficult circumstances. Sometimes it's related to their health. Sometimes it's related to loss of life or relationship. And, and so my, my goal is to be with them and not just go, you need to suck it up and change everything. But I try to bring a restoration of hope into their life because when we don't feel hope-filled, we begin to become discouraged. We become depressed. And, and depression is a trap. It's not that depression is necessarily wrong. I would never say that. I have many, many friends who experience it. But what I would say is, I do believe the church needs to learn to sit with people better than it does and bring hope into their life in ways that would bring change in their life. We have a responsibility to one another. I get to leave here tomorrow, but you people and those who are watching online, you're in my heart. I cannot say I'm part of the body without knowing that I'm part of you. And when you're down, the, body, the, the Bible tells us that when, when someone is mourning, we're to mourn with them. I don't think we're to commiserate with them. But I do think we're to mourn with them, even if it's no more than coming over and saying, can I put my arm on your shoulder? To bring life and hope and love into people's lives. Each time I, I spend time with people going through tough times, I don't judge them for where they are. But I know that God has put me in their life as he's put you in others' lives to elevate people, to bring people up, and to restore hope, and that they would see that there's a better tomorrow. I firmly believe in my life, each day is a better day. Do I have bad things happen in my life? Absolutely, we all do. But I'm not stuck on the bad things. I am forever moving ahead with where God's going. God is in my valleys, God is on my mountaintops. And he's on your valley, in your valleys and on, in, in, on your mountaintops. Hope shared is healing. 
One of the greatest things I learned some 40 or 50 years ago, that a problem shared with someone who is, who is hope-filled with you, a problem shared is a problem halved. So when you share a problem that you're going through, a difficult time, an experience, a situation, whatever that may be, and you have someone who loves you and cares about you, when you share that, the burden begins to lift. And I think the church needs to become more cognizant of that. You know, we thought Facebook and social media was going to bring us all together. But in many cases, we see the division. That's a work of the enemy as well as it's become a work of people. I only share hope in my social media. If someone's going through a tough time, I get with them. Somehow I call them, I text them, I say, hey, brother, or hey, sister, I see that you just lost a family member. I just want you to know I am on your team. I am on your team. It doesn't need to be public, but it does need to be sincere. Hope is practical. It doesn't mean we just sit and wait for everything good to happen, but hope motivates action. One of the greatest things that it, when it, when it, when it, one of the greatest things that many church leaders have, fi- have felt like has happened in the church at large is that apathy has crept in and that people come, not, I'm not talking about you, but it does happen at large, people come together and then they leave. And they don't, they don't participate on other levels. Now, I want to say this very clearly. Every person will not be able to necessarily participate on a Sunday morning. But each one of us, whether we're at home watching this from afar or in this room, we have the ability to bring Jesus in our life into people's lives that we work with, that we go to school with, that are our next door neighbors, and we can bring hope to those people's lives. When I was down here last month, I stayed with my brother and there was this elderly man and he has one of those stair walker things. I'm not sure what they call it, like an elevator kind of thing. And he had one of those, and I've talked to him. So each time I've come back into the complex and parked my car and he's seen me, he has made sure to talk to me. Because when I first met him, he just kind of watched me around the corner kind of thing. And now I have a conversation with him each and every time that I get out of my car and I see him and I talk about, and I, and, I, and I don't say you need hope, but I talk about hope. And he said to me the other day, because he needs healing in his body, he said, I hope you're going to do a healing meeting because I need to be there. We do never know how our hope changes the lives of people we do not know. Whether it's in the grocery store or the convenience store, I've been in lines in grocery stores, and you know people can get pretty uppity sometimes. Me, I can wait an hour because the Spirit of God promises me that the fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. And I can wait in that line a half hour if I need to because I'm going to bring hope to the person at the register. Because no one else may do that all day long. We have, I truly believe that we have a responsibility to hope. So hope is practical. It gets to be applied in our lives. And hope stabilizes stabilizes us in the midst of the storm. In the catacombs, during the Roman persecution, there are 66 drawings of anchors to be found in the caves and the catacombs and the tunnels of the persecuted Christians. These people were hiding out because their lives were being threatened. And hope was their anchor during those dark and stormy days. It tells us that in Hebrews 6:19 for your notes and Hebrews 10:34. Like the anchor, hope grabs what is out of sight. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And as one Puritan said in the 18th century, he said, the cable of faith casts out the anchor of hope and lays hold of the steadfast rock of God's promises. In my world, In my life as a believer, the first thing I learned was there are 3,000 plus promises of God, and each one of those is available to me. 
because God is no respecter of persons. And so as I get ready to close today, the scripture tells us in Psalm 69, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. And I want to share the final scripture as I close. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. There is hope in that singular scripture that for those who love him, there's a better tomorrow coming. Thank you and God bless you. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.